Hello and welcome fans from all over the, to the nest, the home of the Pensacola Christian College Eagles. Hi, I'm Alvin Chapman. Alongside me, the Sports Information Director here at the college, Braden Martyr. Braden, great to be beside you for the first time this season. Yeah, excited to be back, Al. It's been a while since I've been behind the table with you for these games. Really looking forward to Crowley's Ridge Eagles tonight. It's going to be a fun matchup between these two teams. Both teams winless so far in the season. They're starting off their seasons in the Pensacola Invitational. The matchup really to look forward to, though, to not not cut to the chase here. Liam Gersh versus Braxton Cousins. Cousins standing at 6'7", a, a bigger build as well. Averaged 13 points per game last year. His freshman year averaged 18 points per contest as well. And Liam Gertz last night had 25 points, 16 of those set 25 points in the second half. Yeah, Liam had a big second half last night. Uh, gave, the, gave the Eagles a chance near the end of that game. But uh, that is definitely going to be the matchup of the night to watch. The two players, both really good post players. They can also stretch the floor and shoot a little bit. Both very, very smart players, though. They both average a lot of assists, pass the ball very well. And defensively, they're both good, too. So it's going to be a really enjoyable match. Thank you so much, viewers at home, for joining us here tonight. Let's go ahead and kick it over to our PA announcer, Logan Tisman, for the pregame ceremonies. And the next voice you will hear is Alvin Chapman and Braden Motter. Thank you. Welcome to the Nest, the home of the Pensacola Christian College Eagles. Tonight's game is between the Crowley's Ridge College and your PCC Eagles. The National Christian College Athletic Association is committed to the true spirit of competition and upholding the four core values of the game plan for life, love, integrity, faith, and excellence. We ask that each participant, official, and spectator join us in exhibiting these Christ-like characteristics and help create a positive environment in which to enjoy today's competition. At this time, please stand for prayer and remain standing for the National Anthem. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. I thank you for both teams' safety coming here. I pray that both teams will stay safe in the court and play to the best of their ability. I hope you do everything to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Tonight's sports medicine coverage is provided by the Andrews Institute and Baptist Healthcare, the official sports medicine provider for Pensacola Christian College. Starting tonight for Crowley's Ridge. Number zero, Jalen Bozeman. Number two, Braxton Cousins. Number five, George McCurdy. Number 14, Zach Brown and number 25, Hayden Robinson. The Pioneers are led by coach Chris Perkins. And now the starting lineup for your Pensacola Christian College Eagles. A junior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, number zero, Brantley Kuski. A sophomore from Loveland, Colorado, number three, Derek Woods. A grad student from Ringgold, Louisiana, number five, Malachi Herbster. A junior from Tustin, California, number 11, Lucas Hernandez. 
And a sophomore from Burleson, Texas, number 50, Liam Gertz. The Eagles are led by coach Jason Bell with assistant coaches Micah Conlon and Mark Getch. Once again, viewers at home, thank you so much for joining us here tonight in the Nest, the home of the Pensacola Christian College Eagles. I am joined tonight by one of my close friends, Braden Modder. Braden, once again, great to be beside you tonight for this highly anticipated match this season. Yeah, I'm excited to be back behind the table with you, Al. Going to be a good game here, Pioneers, Eagles. Match we talked about earlier, Braxton Cousins, Liam Gertz right there at the center. Braxton wins the tip. It's going to be a fun night here in the Nest. They hand it over to number number zero, Jalen Bozeman. Now in the hands of Hayden Robinson. They go quickly inside to Bozeman, but erase that call away, a traveling violation called by the sideline official. Here's Koski. A very quiet night as far as the sporting category goes. Four points, along with six times he turned over the ball. Now the... Ball's in the hands of Lucas Hernandez. He had the first eight points for the Eagles last night as well. Crossed over to Brantley Koski. Koski will go down to Derek Woods, and he turns it over. A little miscommunication there between Woods and Koski. Eagles early, didn't jump to a set, just yes! ran into their basic offense yes! to try and move the ball, get that yes! defense to shift a little bit, see if they can lock up here defensively. George McCurdy will hand it inside to Cousins. Cousins will work on Malachi Herbster, and Herbster has no other option but to foul him on his way to the basket. Yeah, one of my favorite things about watching Cousins play is not just his scoring ability, but it's his footwork. He's really smart, really good with his footwork, and he's very patient. He doesn't jump to his moves too soon. He's patient, waits for the defense to make a mistake, and, make a mistake, and then exploits that. Cousins' first basket is good from the charity stripe. Second attempt up for Cousins and rattles inside of the 10. Bozeman will pick up Koski, three quarters court. Takes a screen. Baseline jumper for Koski, no good. Up to Bozeman. Bozeman will look to attack on Gertz. Here is McCurdy. McCurdy with the snatch back dribble. They go to Robinson for the triple, no good. Ball saved by Koski, but into the hands of number zero, Jalen Bozeman. Fading jumper for Braxton Cousins. You talked about his footwork. Let's talk about that fading jump shot there, Braden. Yeah, it's a real quick step back that he had there. Because of his height being at 6'7", he also has a really high release, makes that step back fadeaway jumper really difficult to guard. Great patience from him on that side of the floor. Malachi Herbster will try to return the favor on the low block. Impedes his will. A number five, George McCurdy. Basket and one for the Maranatha University transfer. Yeah, that was a great pickup from Coach Bell and the Eagles grabbing Malachi from Maranatha up north in Wisconsin. Good post play there. Strong move to the basket. Finishes through McCurdy's contact. Gives himself an opportunity for an and one. Can't finish the old-fashioned three-point play. Now here is Zach Brown, the transfer from South Arkansas College. He's joined by his teammate number four, Gerardney Tubbs. Nice drive to the basket for number five, George McCurdy, and he draws enough contact for the whistle. Talk about him manipulating his defender and driving baseline there, Braden. Yeah, he get downhill very well there. Always go right into the defender's chest or you aim for that outside shoulder. Right there, he went right through the outside shoulder of Koski. He tried to recover, put the body into him a little too much. McCurdy's at the line for two. Can't get the first one to fall for McCurdy. The junior out of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. He misses both of them. Here is Koski, a lot of pressure. Dribble handoff to Woods. Yeah, with the lineup the Eagles have out there right now, Koski is the main ball handler. Pioneers obviously know that. Applying ball pressure to anybody else who gets the ball, but obviously with a good defender, 
on Koski, making sure his job is difficult too. Offensive foul will wipe away the shot from Gertz in the corner. Look at that, Braxton Cousins getting on the dirty side of the play. Yeah, something I talked about early on was Cousins' smarts and his IQ right there, waiting for Koski to come downhill. Whether or not he was going to kick it didn't matter. He stepped up, took that charge right in the chest. Koski gets two early fouls and has to head to the bench. Quickly inserted into the contest. That's number one, Colin Wilkerson, the junior from Grand Tool, Illinois. Colin Wilkerson with four points last night. Baskets coming in the flow of the offense. And there's an illegal screen set by Robinson. What did you see there, Mater? Uh, they were trying to set a down screen for the shooter to be able to pop up, get a quick release. And instead of holding that screen all the way through, he tried to release early, maybe try and slip it a little bit, caught that defender. I easy illegal screen there from the official. Gertz will bring the ball up. Guarded by Cousins. Wilkerson will find a wide open Lucas Hernandez from long range. No good, but Gertz will win the rebound. The battle against Cousins. Yeah, Liam, what Liam lacks in size, he makes up for an IQ. Stayed back a little bit when the initial shot went up instead of trying to jump with Braxton. Went around him and tried to jump past him, and that's exactly what he did. Got the easy two. Bozeman responds quickly with an easy layup on the other side. They go inside to Derek Woods. Beautiful pass and quick thinking there by the junior, Colin Wilkerson. Cousins quickly double team, fading jumper. Send as many men as you want to, it doesn't matter. Yeah, Cousins again, really good footwork. That high release from his 6'7 frame makes it very difficult for the Eagles to guard him, even with the double team coming from Derek Woods and they wall up. Cousins able to shoot over top. Coming into the game, the two freshmen here from the Pioneers. That is number 10, Gavin Hall. And also number 24, Hunter Wilkerson. And he's a junior, actually, my apologies. Three, four, Gertz rattles out. Tries to keep it alive, and they do the Pioneers find somehow Gavin Hall. Wilkerson will swing it over to Brown. Cousins will work on Herbster. Wide open, Wilkerson will pass it over to Zach Brown for a three. Strong rebound by Ward. Brown gets in the passing lane, preventing the pass directed towards Lucas Hernandez. Great anticipation there from Zach Brown. Saw that pass coming from three quarters court. Jumped it, almost got his hands to it. Did get the deflection though. Eagles keep possession, but great anticipation from Brown to deflect that pass. Here's Gertz, hand off to Wilkerson. Wilkerson tries to feed Herbster, pass deflected. Herbster got a hand on it, but to no avail. Bozeman throws the bomb! Foul and one! Wow, beautiful pass distributed there by the Pioneers. And Brown receives the ball in a place where no one else can grab it. Bozeman with the beautiful distribution. Yeah, that was a great pass from Bozeman. Brown was able to get up, elevate over all the Eagles defenders, almost got the crazy finish, did get the and one though. Puts him at the line for two, for one, excuse me. And that is a foul on Derek Woods, his second. Now brings Steven Fike into the contest as well as the Pioneers now lead by five. We see Gertz bringing the ball up which is an advantage for the Eagles, despite how good Braxton Cousins is. He's not a player you want walking the ball up full court, quarters court against a guy with a great handle like Liam Gertz. Yeah, like I was talking about earlier, Koski's the main ball handling point guard for this Eagles team, and when he had to go to the bench a couple minutes ago with two quick fouls, Gertz kind of takes over as that point forward position, helps get the Eagles into their offense and bring the ball up the floor. Wilkerson goes to Gertz. Gertz. Now triple team, steps through the defenders, and then a loose ball foul on Braxton Cousins. Don't even think that was intentional, but he's a big guy when he goes for the ball, 
Someone's going to get hurt in that situation there, Braden. Yeah, when you send two big guys up going for the rebound, they're going to crash into each other. Somebody's going to get the worst end of that. Gertz got it there, but the officials called a foul there on Cousins. Eagles keep possession. Fresh 20 on the clock. So in other words, nobody wins in this battle. Gertz gets a little hurt. Braxton gets tacked on for his first foul of the game. Reno misses the first. Rather, Fike. Shot on the way, no good for the Pioneers. That was number three, Josh Lazario. Preparing to come into the contest here for the Pioneers. Number four, Gerardney Tubbs, a junior from Junction City, Arkansas. Another player that transferred to the Pioneers from South Arkansas College. Yeah, one thing I noticed on that last defensive possessions for the Eagles, Malachi Herbster picked up Braxton Cousins at half court, gave, a, gave him a little bit of body as he came across half court. I think Coach Bell wants Herbster to try and disrupt Cousins in any way possible outside the paint, let him be uncomfortable before he gets comfortable down there at low. Here is Gavin Hall accelerating the ball. They go inside to Tubbs. Tubbs keeps it easy. He mentioned how Gerardney Tubbs is a transfer from South Arkansas College. He averaged 12 points per contest through seven games and five rebounds, Braden. And the ball's loose. The Pioneers the other way. Zach Brown from long range all by himself. And he now has six. Hernandez, he'll drive baseline. Dumped it down to Reno, layup good. Rather to Fike, layup good. Yeah, good patience there from Lucas Hernandez on that baseline drive. Almost got himself into a bad spot, but Fike with great position down low on the block. Easy pass for Hernandez, easy finish for Fike. More basketball when we come back from this timeout from the Eagles. Stay tuned. remaining, Eagles trailing now by eight. Gavin Hall accelerating the ball past half court. They quickly get it over to Lazario. Gavin Hall, mid-range jumper, no good. Tough rebound awarded by Wagner. He also gets the foul as tacked on to number 24, Hunter Wilkerson. Yeah, good position there from Aaron Wagner on that rebound. Tried to get up, get that rebound, but Wilkerson didn't have as good a position, jumped over the back of Wagner. Easy foul call for the official. That was Wilkerson's first foul call today. And also Titus Anderson will make his first appearance into the ball game for Lucas Hernandez. Gertz finds a cutting Wagner. Ball back to Gertz. They go inside to Stephen Fike. Gertz, he'll drive. Gets past his defender and gets the lucky bounce. Good finish there from Liam Gertz. On the offensive side of the ball, Eagles could space the floor just a little bit better. I agree with you, Braden. There was a little bit of a height disadvantage. Uh, Steven Fike was being guarded by number 30, Lazarino, who's only six feet tall, and Fike standing at 6'5". That's a great mismatch that the Eagles want to exploit. Wagner goes to Wilkerson. Wilkerson goes inside to Wagner. Wagner can't get the finish. Wilkerson, the strong rebound, no good. Wagner attempt to keep it alive to no avail. Lazarino finds a trailing Tubbs. Tubbs tries to go to Wilkerson, but that was deflected by the Eagles defense. Good hands there from Liam to get a hand on that pass. Came at him a little quicker than he expected, was unable to get possession of it. Great deflection though from Liam. Puts Pioneers in a tough spot on that baseline. 21 seconds remaining on the shot clock. They go inside to Tubbs. Tubbs works on Fike. And a foul. Something me and you, Al, me and you were talking about at that break was 
doing your work early as a post defender when you got guys like Tubbs and Braxton Cousins who are much bigger and stronger than a lot of our post players. You can't sit behind them and hope that you can overpower them because they will back you down as we see Tubbs almost does it there again. If you're Fike or Liam guarding Cousins or Tubbs, you have to fight early and get over the top, get on top of that post player. Don't let that entry pass get in there because once they catch that ball on the block, there's not a lot they can do. The Eagles now in a bit of foul trouble. Stephen Fike with two fouls and on the bench, Brantley Koski with two, as well as Derek Woods with two fouls to his own. And an illegal screen called there by number 30, Josh Lazarino. And coming to the table now for the Eagles, a name that I mispronounce all the time, but he's hard to miss. Standing at 6'11", number 40, good news, Aka Nafua. Yeah, good news, another transfer for the Eagles out of Maranatha University in Watertown, Wisconsin. Obviously, like you talked about, big frame at seven feet tall. Coach Bell needs a little bit of height in there to try and help with that post defense. Not just a 6'11 height, but a seven foot six wingspan for good news, Aka Nafua. With the foul trouble, he finds himself into the competition. He averaged five points per contest last year at Maranatha Baptist University. But, Braden, I have to ask you, how do you think he will match up against the much stronger and wider Tubbs? Well, once again, it's one of those things I was talking about earlier. you got to do your work early, although good news is almost seven feet tall. He's obviously a little bit smaller than Tubbs muscle-wise, so Tubbs is going to be able to back him down if he stands right behind him. So good news has to use his reach, use his length, kind of half front Tubbs in that block, try and deny that in entry pass. Wagner will accelerate the ball past half court and find Titus Anderson. Anderson will go corner to Wilkerson. Wagner works and drives, floater on the way, and good for Aaron Wagner, his first points of the game. Good patience there from Wagner. Wanted the shot, defender was backed off of him a little bit, decided to take a drive, good patience on the finish. A lot of contact there by Akanufula. That will send Zach back to the line. Zach Brown leading all scorers in, all players rather, in scoring. He has eight. And a number of substitutions as well for the Pioneers, including, I believe, the shooter. Tubbs will come out the contest. Gavin hey, Hall match, as well as, I believe, Zach Brown in a couple moments. Also, Malachi Herbsel will come into the contest, I believe, to have the defensive matchup of guarding Braxton Cousins. Yeah, it's very obvious Coach Bell wants Malachi to match up against Cousins in the paint. Like I was talking about earlier, let's see when they come down defensively, if Herbster puts a body on Cousins as soon as he crosses half court, try and make that getting position in the post difficult for Braxton. Coming to the game, also Trent McGowan for the Pioneers as well. Wagner receives the ball in the middle. Anderson, three from the corner, he knocks it down! Actually, a long two with Titus Anderson, the sophomore from Georgia. Great press break there from the Eagles. Once again, Aaron Wagner in the middle. Good patience to find that corner kick out to Titus Anderson. Way to be ready for Titus Anderson and Braxton Cousins having his way on that low post. He has 10. Herbster works inside. Jumper short. Wilkerson the rebound. Eagles trail by seven. McGurdy, he'll drive to his left side. Wilkerson will drive on Wilkerson. George McCurdy, now guarded by Titus Anderson. Wilkerson will shoot from long range, no good. Wagner, the strong rebound. He'll push to break. Wagner, he'll drive, he'll finish. Can't get the buckets, but he'll get the foul. Loving the actions that we're seeing here from Aaron Wagner, the transfer two years ago from Spurgeon College. Yeah, good good pick up there from Coach Bell as well. Got a handful of transfers on the team. Good two-man game on this side of the floor with Wagner and Malachi Herbster. Getting the handoff from Herbster, driving downhill. Wagner puts himself at the line for two. He knocks down the first free throw, and we see Koski back in the competition here for Pensacola. I believe he is in for Colin Wilkerson. Well, well. 
We know Koski does have two quick fouls that he received early. Blaze Collin will also come into the game for Liam Gertz. Yeah, head coach of the Pioneers, Chris Perkins, 17th season as the head coach. He knows that Koski's got two early fouls, and he knows that Koski's a very key player on this Eagles team, being the main ball handling guard. So I think he's going to go right after him. Beautiful defense there by Herbster. Way to defend against Braxton Cousins without calling the, drawing the whistle rather. Koski, Wagner, he'll drive on McGowan. Koski, go to Herbster. Wagner will take a triple. Hard off the back iron. Cousins will come down with it. Koski always aggressive on those offensive boards. Almost went for the ball there, knowing that he would have potentially got his third foul. Smart play there to not. And another block, but a foul on the back side from Titus Anderson. Great help side defense, though, by Malachi Herbster. Yeah, good help defense there. Got to rotate a little bit sooner, try and get there before the offensive player gets that drive going. If you arrive late, normally nine times out of ten, it's going to be a foul call. Because if you get there early, you can either take a charge, or if you're there early enough, the offensive player will look to kick instead of try and drive through a potential charge. Bozeman, in his first trip to the free throw line, he knocks down the first free throw. Was on the roster last year for the Pioneers, but his his minutes were limited. Awesome to see him in the starting lineup and fetching a name for himself for this Crowley Ridge roster. Anderson goes to a cutting Wagner, gets his defender to miss. Conlin receiving a lot of pressure from Cousins. Anderson out of the hands of Wagner. Koski, eight seconds left, now seven on the shot clock. And Wagner travels before putting the ball on the floor. Yeah, once again, Eagles need to space the floor a little bit better. Ball movement was good there, but the space wasn't open. The driving lanes weren't open. Eagles need to pass and cut as they're doing. Keep those spaces, those spacing lanes open so that we can get some drives. Bozeman will drive on Anderson. Goes to McGurdy. McGurdy nearly misses. Koski McGowan with the triple in the opposite corner. Great drive there from Bozeman. We talked about earlier when Lucas Hernandez drove baseline and kicked corner to patience. Bozeman had the same right there. Instead of getting frantic under the basket, which a lot of players do, great patience there, find the easy kick out. Eagles trailing by nine, opposite corner here for Anderson! What a shot! Titus Anderson! And Bozeman, once again, a quick basket on the other side. Harley knocking off any time off the shot clock. Koski will drive on McGowan. Spin move, gets his defender in the air. A lot of contact. His legs will chop from under him, and he'll go to the line to earn those two points. What do you like about that move there from Koski? Well, I love the patience. I keep emphasizing yes. that tonight, but I love the patience of Koski. He was looking to pass initially, then realized he was on an island with his defender one-on-one, -on -one, decided to try and get downhill, and when he cut him off, quick spin move there, and then again, good patience on the ball fake to then try and slip under, get the easy two, but he was hit by the uh, help defender in the legs on his way down. Brantley Kossi getting his first points of the night. We haven't seen much of him in this first half due to foul trouble, but how pivotal is he to this Eagles roster? He's obviously the main ball handling point guard, so when he's on the bench, like we talked about earlier, Liam Gertz has to step in normally, try, the play, try and play that point forward position. But Koski is obviously one of the best dribble drivers on the team, and he always gets downhill, usually gets to a good finish like we saw earlier, got, got through a little bit of contact, was able to knock both of his free throws down. But Koski is defensively also one of the heartbeats of this team, always guarding the other team's point guard. And obviously he uh, played uh, football in high school, was a cornerback, and so he's obviously got very good footwork, good anticipation, makes him a very good basketball defender as well. Great job pushing his defender baseline. An offensive foul that will erase away the shot from Blaze Conlon. Eagles trailing now by six. Wagner picking up his man full court. That is George McCurdy. Cousins.
Eagles trying to stun a double on Cousins. Anderson with a great defense on Bozeman. But a better bucket from Bozeman. Yeah, you can't get mad at Anderson there. That's great defense. Almost stole the pass and then a good hand on the shot attempt. Bozeman just had a great finish there. Tomlin literally loses, loses the handle, rather. Gets it over to Koski. Great drive inside hand on the left side of the basket for Koski. Yeah, Koski's finishes around the rim are always very unique. He usually finishes with either an offhand or jumps off the wrong, wrong foot, foot to try and throw off the defender because you try and anticipate the block based off of how someone would normally attack the basket. Koski, with great patience, always finds a unique finish. A race away that basket. Great defense there by Herbster on the much larger defender, Braxton Cousins. That's a travel that will race away those two points. Any opportunity for Braxton Cousins to get to two, double digits. Here's Titus Anderson. Played four years of basketball at Creekside Christian Academy. And picks up the traveling violation. Yeah, tried to get downhill off the double screen. Got a little bump there from the defender. Lost his footing, picked up the ball, and took a couple steps, still trying to regain his balance. Easy call there for the, fish, for the official Eagles with a turnover. Uses the Cousins screen. Cousins. Look at that pass intercepted from Koski. Koski with two defenders around him. Alters his shot. Brantley Koski. Limited minutes with six points to his name. Talk about that transition basket from him. Yeah, great anticipation, good steal from Koski. And again, the patience of Koski and the great finish under the rim. Again, making himself a tough player to block. Always finishes around the rim, off hand, off foot. A little bit of everything on that shot. Eagles trail by four. Timeout from the Pioneers. We will briefly step aside. We're back with more action here in the first half of basketball. The Eagles trail by four. Another interception on the defensive side. Wagner hits a cutting Herbster. Finishes through traffic, Malachi Herbster. Great transition bucket there for the Eagles out of the timeout. Malachi grabs his fourth points of the night. Eagles now just down by one possession. And a miss by Brown, but a finish by Bozeman. Beautiful cut by Brown, unable to finish at the rim. But Bozeman pushes the lead back to four. Conlin, three! Blaise Contested! Conlin, four, Great three. confident shot there from Blaze. Eagles don't get back in transition. And number 14, Zach Brown gets the easy layup. Love seeing Blaze shoot that three with confidence, but, but Eagles got to get back faster than that. that. Give up Eagles an easy layup. 25. Unfortunately, Aaron gives Wagner up an and one as well. Gives night. Brown a chance to get three points on one possession. And Braden, it seems like Zach Brown and Jalen Bozeman have been taking advantage multiple times. Every, in when number a one basket either from, from, from Anderson, from Long Ranger, from Conlin, it almost seems like the Pioneers every time are quickly getting out and taking advantage of the mismatch on the other side. Yeah, transition defense is something to always think about on a basketball team. And transition defense doesn't always have to come off a missed basket. You can still transition off of a made basket very quickly. Roy Williams in North Carolina a few years back was known for that. Anytime the ball would go through the hoop, they'd inbound it and get it up the floor in less than three seconds. Did a lot of things to try and get teams playing fast, and Crowley's Ridge is doing that here tonight. Pass inside to Herbster, off the glass, no good. Misses the entirety of the 10. Here is George McCurdy, feeds Brown. They go inside to Braxton Cousins, and a backcourt violation. Three phenomenal defensive stops by the Eagles team here. I was about to say by the Eagles defense, but it's not good to use the same word twice in a sentence. Other to say, great defense by Pensacola. 
Yeah, those are good half-court defensive possessions from the Eagles. If they can if they can find a way to lock down those transition stops, I think the Eagles could find themselves in the lead here before the half. Just under five minutes remaining in this half. Conlin, opposite corner for a triple. Deep off the iron. Great action to get him open. And an offensive foul. That'll take away that shot. A bit obvious there, Braden. The extension of the elbow sold it for the baseline official. Yeah, that was a good play from Koski. Let him push him in the chest. Maybe jumped off a little bit more than needed, but uh, McCurdy definitely pushed off there. Easy offensive foul call for the officials. Eagles get the ball. Once again, another half-court defensive stand from them. See if we can't get a bucket and try and tie this game up or get much closer to it. Wagner. Herbster. Koski goes to Wilkerson. Herbster goes to Koski. Koski will drive. Runner, no good, just a bit short. Now here comes the Pioneers to transition. Brown, he'll run to the opposite corner. Better transition. Brown loses his defender swiftly. Better transition defense there for the Eagles. Almost gave up another easy two, but they got back, were able to stuff them. See if they can't get a half court stand Come here. On! Unable, beautiful passing here by the Pioneers. After the shot by Robinson, Coach Perkins calls a timeout for the Pioneers to talk things over. As they lead by six, we will step aside. down by six. Just wanted to wish a congratulations to our Eagles men's soccer team for clinching the South Region Championship at Tacoma Falls against Bob Jones University. What a stand by them, Braden, winning that game two to zero. Yeah, that was a big game for the Eagles. Had uh, had Bob Jones here a couple weeks ago in late October, tied at 0-0, met again in the Region Championship game, and the Eagles were able to get the 2-0 win, advanced to the national tournament. Aaron Wagner playing very pivotal minutes here in this game. So far with three points, he is relieved by the shooter from West Coast, Lucas Hernandez, finished with 11, but also had the team's first eight points yesterday. Conlin, quick, no, rebounds his own miss, can't get a hand on it. Wilkerson fighting for the ball. Bozeman gets a hand on it, and a quick timeout, 30 seconds, made by the Pioneers. We're gonna stay here for that one. The Pioneers now have 27 seconds left. What do you think the coach is drawing up in his huddle to push this lead, possibly one point shy from double digits? Well, if Cousins is still on the floor, I think I'd go back down to him. It's been a while since they got him in isolation down on the block. Again, the big thing about Cousins is he is smart and a very good passer. So even if the Eagles slam down a double team, Cousins is probably gonna make the right decision to find a kick out. So if I'm the Pioneers, I'm looking to get the ball into Cousins. Eagles doing a phenomenal job as of late, slowing down that transition offense. But guys like Zach Brown and Bozeman are flying up the floor at a moment's notice. Here is Robinson now for the inbound. And Gavin Hall for the recipient. Robinson. Away, push you up, Zach. Bozeman, beautiful passing here by the Pioneers. Gavin with a jab on Wilkerson, loses him and finishes with a beautiful that's jump shot there. Right there. His first field goal of the game. Good finish there from Gavin Hall. That time, Pioneers used Cousins as a screener up top in the high post, set about four screens in that possession. As Cousins gets called for the block, trying to jump out in front of Lucas Hernandez. That is Cousins. Second foul, and Tubbs will come relieve him. And 
That also creates a one-on-one -on -one free throw opportunity here for the Eagles. Three minutes remaining, both teams in the bonus. And we send Hernandez to the line. Hernandez at West Coast shot 49% from perimeter. First attempt good for Lucas Hernandez. Shrinks the deficit back to seven. Lucas Hernandez knocks down both free throws. Let's see if we can get another good half court stance. And Brown once again. Cuts baseline, loses Koski, finishes high at the rim. Count the basket and the foul for Zach Brown. Yeah, it was pretty obvious that the Eagles there were trying to apply a little bit of ball pressure, try and make easy passes difficult, and uh, easy back cut there for the Pioneers. Zach Brown gets another and one. I think that's his third and one of the night. Koski gets his third foul and has to head to the bench for the remainder of this first half. That puts Paul Stickles into the game for Pensacola. Paul Stickles, a freshman from Virginia, went to Valley Christian School. Gertz works on Tubbs, a lot of contact, will kick to Hernandez for a triple. No good, Gertz attempts to keep it alive. Gavin Hall with the tiptoe work on the sideline, rather baseline. Here is Gavin Hall in transition, another jumper. A lot of contact, no call. Second opportunity, no good. Tubbs the rebound and finish. Gerardney Tubbs. Tubbs staying after it on the offensive glass. Eagles tried to push him out, couldn't push him out. Out jumps, everybody gets the easy two. Wolkerson can't finish at the rim. And Stickles, an opportunity to force the jump ball. Eagles trailing by 11 with two minutes and 14 seconds left. Two, two. Coach Perkins calling to action from the sideline. Here's Hall with numerous pass fakes. They go to Robinson. Robinson goes to Tubbs. And Robinson misses the pass. Derek Woods will come back into the game. Braden, we remember Woods has not played for the majority of this half due to foul trouble early. Yeah, there was a handful of Eagles that got into some early foul trouble there. Woods was obviously one of them. Good to see him back on the floor. Great rebounder, good hustle player. Has a decent mid-range game if he can find the opening. See if they can't find a way to get Derek involved here on the offensive side of the floor. Wilkerson goes to Gertz. Gertz will work on Tubbs. Get to step on him and finishes through contact. Wow, beautiful move. Six points now for Liam Gertz. Good take from Liam, way to drive right through the shoulder of Tubbs there off the baseline and great finish under the defender's elbows. Gavin Hall, pull up jump shot, just short. Here's Stickles pushing the break. Wilkerson will switch to fields. Hernandez will go back to Wilkerson. Stickles will go down low to Derek Woods and he'll record his first collegiate assist. Great vision there from Stickles and Woods working together there on the two-man game. Find the entry pass, Stickles cut off of it. Maybe had an easy two, but Derek went up himself, got an easy two points, pulled the Eagles back to within seven. Seven and manageable for the Eagles. 14 on the shot clock. Tubbs with a solid screen. Gavin, another jumper, no good. Tubbs the offensive rebound, misses the opportunity. Bozeman makes his defender miss. They can't finish that one either. Tubbs. He'll get fouled. Let's go. Rodney, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, Pioneers with four offensive rebounds there in the possession. Derek and Liam both in there trying to body and jump with them. Unfortunately, couldn't come down with it. Tubbs finds himself at the free throw line for two. Rodney, Rodney, Gerardney rather, a frame like mine, but that brother could move. Not gonna lie, the guy can play some ball. We mentioned last year he played at South Arkansas College, averaged 12 points and five rebounds through five games. 
And he's a great person to come off to relieve a guy like Braxton Cousins because they still bring that same physicality. Misses both free throws. Now one second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. They go inside to Woods. Woods, a lot of contact. But does a great job taking advantage of the mismatch, backing him into the rim and taking a shot, gets hit on the arm. And now we'll get a chance to convert on two free throws. Yeah, I think the Eagles ran a little pistol action there, tried to get a switch. Woods got the favorable matchup with Gavin Hall, only five foot ten, guarding him. Tried to go up through the contact, got his arm ripped out of the air, but Woods found himself, found himself at the free throw line, knocks down the first one. Derek Woods, a person that was here about three seasons ago, misses the first free throw collected by Bozeman. Eagles trailing by six, 13 remaining on the game clock. They go inside to Tubbs, a force of nature, and an offensive foul called by the baseline official. Great charge take there from Liam Gertz. Again, talked about his IQ earlier. After that second or third big shoulder to the chest, you take that fourth one right in and then you fall to the floor. That official's got no choice but to call that a charge. That was Tubbs first. Wilkerson gets his pass deflected. Bozeman will launch up a prayer very much short. Great basketball in this first half between both ball clubs here. 43 to 37 is the score. A lot of basketball remaining as well. Thank you so much for joining us here for the first half. Don't go too far. Please enjoy some replays provided by our video promotion team and also some commercials provided by Pensacola Christian College. Alvin Chapman and Brayden Motter will be the voices you will hear when we come back. that unites us, the heartbeat of everything we do. Since 1974, we've been building, reaching, expanding our limits. And yet today, one thing hasn't changed. Pensacola Christian College empowers leaders to influence the world for Christ. Want to get a head start in college? With Pensacola Christian College's online dual enrollment program, you can do just that. Open to juniors and seniors in Christian schools and Aveca Academy homeschoolers, dual enrollment students can take up to six online courses per year, all counting towards PCC college credit requirements. With three different options throughout the school year and summer and over 20 courses, choose to lighten your college load and, depending on your major, finish college early. You will be able to fit courses around your schedule, a perfect way to complete many of your general college education courses before you graduate high school and step foot on campus. To learn more about getting a head start on your education today, visit pcci.edu slash dual enrollment. Choosing a college is so much more than deciding where you're going to live for the next few years. It's choosing a culture, group of people, and academic standard that will shape you into the person you want to become. It's an exciting time, and when you visit campus, it gets even more exciting. It's your moment to get a feel for the atmosphere and community. Catch a game, 
sit in on classes, visit chapel, make new friends, and so much more. And now you can experience college life your way with multiple visit options. No matter when you come, you'll find a vibrant community influencing the world for Christ. You won't just blend in, you'll belong. So don't wait. See how you can experience PCC today.
20 more minutes of basketball underway. 37 to 43 is the score. Hi, I'm Alvin Chapman. Alongside me, Braden Modder. Braden, what a first half of basketball we've been able to witness. But the scoring story has been Zach Brown with 15 points and been able to get to the line on three trips. Yeah, he had a good first half. He played very aggressively, got downhill, grabbed a handful of offensive rebounds as well. Woods with a good take there. Couldn't get to finish with the offhand. But yeah, Brown had a very good first half, got downhill, drove the ball well. He's not necessarily known for his shooting, but a very good dribble driver and a good finisher around the rim. McCurdy. The Eagles going inside. Rather, the Pioneers two. Zach Brown, Bozeman leaves it on the front of the rim. Bruce Koski, he had six points in that first half. Wide open, Kurtz. Dumps it down to Malachi Herbster. Can't finish on the other end. Good ball fake and pass there from Liam Gertz. Herbster just couldn't get the fall, couldn't get the shot to fall. I know that probably hurt Gertz more than it hurt Herbster after a great pass like that. Bozeman finishes the pass the second time. And it's the first point of the half. He now has double digits, 11 points to his name. Gertz works on Cousins. Woods for the jump shot and good. Woods loves to take that baseline jumper from 15 feet away. Yeah, I talked about earlier as a decent mid-range game. Good find there from Liam Gertz and good shot from Derek. Defender had to slam the help down because Liam was going to have an easy layup. Good kick from him. Here is Braxton Cousins. Cousins tries to work on Herbster. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Brown gets past his defender with ease. Now with 17 points to his name. Yeah, like they talked about, not really known for his shooting, but when the shot clock's under five seconds, Lucas had no choice but to step out just in case he decided to take a three. Great drive and good finish from Zach Brown. Hernandez with 13 seconds left. They go back inside to Woods. Woods works on Robinson, can't get the shot to fall. They get it inside to Braxton. Spin move. Inside. Basket good. Great feel there from Braxton on the defender. Malachi Herbst was leaning on him a little bit. He felt that quick spin off. Easy two for Braxton. I love hearing what Coach Perkins is saying. 17 years as the coach for the Pioneers. Three in a row. Three stops in a row and three baskets in a row. And that's three points for Lucas Hernandez, his first shot of the game. Yeah, good shot there from Lucas. Good kick out from, I believe it was Malachi Herbster. Good decision there. Down below was double teamed in the paint. Decided to kick it out. Lucas wide open, knocked down the easy three. That was actually his second field goal of the game. The first one from beyond the arc. He now has five. Gertz has Cousins on the perimeter. Makes some pay. Liam Gertz. Liam had his hand up, holding three to the sky before the ball even went through the net. Felt good out of his hands. He knew it was going down. Good, confident shot there from Liam. I love how Liam Gertz has forced him to play out on the perimeter. Cousins, a great post defender. Oh, Cousins making me pay with my words. Works inside, backboard, good. Drives hard inside and lays it off the glass beautifully. Good patience and good footwork. The Eagles tried to help a little bit. But in that situation, you can't just help a little bit. You either have to commit to a full double team or just leave your guy on an island and hope that he is, finds a way to stop Braxton. He's too smart of a player and has too good a footwork to not get the easy two. Koski's basket score short. Robinson, he'll drive on Woods. Was more open than he thought, but he finishes his own miss. Hayden Robinson. Gertz goes behind his back, tries to dump it down to Herbster, but the pass too low. Intercepted by the Pioneers. McCurdy 
strong to the basket, count the basket, and one. Great downhill drive there from McCurdy, finishes through the contact from Gertz, gets his and one. I believe that's the sixth and one of the night for the Pioneers. Eagles find themselves having a foul in the paint due to the unique finishing and speed of these Pioneers. Here's Gerardney Tubbs, as well as Wilkerson. Wilkerson's coming in for Hayden Robinson. Here's the first shot here for George McCurdy. On the way, good. The old fashioned three point play, as I like to call it. McCurdy now has five points alone in this second half. Eagles a little stagnant here in the half court, trying to figure something out. They go to Herbster. Inside hand. His first field goal of the quarter. Rather half. They go inside the hubs. Rather tubs. Second hand. Second chance. Great relentlessness there by Gerardi Tubbs. Curtis has Tubbs out on the perimeter. Goes behind his back. Anderson, three from Gertz, no good. McCurdy, Zach Brown will drive, retracts his dribble to the corner. Tubbs, works on Gertz, deflection. What a block there by Liam Gertz. Yeah, it was a good attempt by Tubbs, better defense from Liam was patient, didn't jump too soon, didn't fall for the head fake, went up straight, got the block. Three on the way from Anderson. Here's Bozeman. Beautiful cut by McCurdy, even better finish. McCurdy with seven points so far in this half. And just like that, the Pioneers lead by 13. Anderson corner three, no good. McCurdy goes to Wilkerson, Zach Brown. Throws the lob, no good, but a foul. A Little bit of a delay foul call there from the official. Nonetheless, I believe it was the correct call. He was just waiting for the baseline official to see if he made it. Malachi went up to try and block that lob. Hunter Wilkerson still almost got the finish to go. Finds himself at the line, two free throws. Hunter Wilkerson for his first trip to the line today, knocks down the first free throw. Wagner into the contest as well for Malachi Herbster. That was his first foul committed in the game. Another attempt for Hunter Wilkerson. He knocks it in. Here we go, three in a row. Wagner goes inside to Gertz, quickly double team. Hernandez shot on the way, no good. McCurdy, he'll control it. Slows down the tempo as well. Met by Hernandez. Ball rotated to Bowman. Lob to Zach, to no avail. There's a great play there from the Pioneers. Good lob, unfortunately just couldn't get the finish. But that's a great backdoor cut lob for the Pioneers. Wagner called for a travel on the Eagles side of the floor. Pioneers take possession. Paul Stickles, a freshman from Woodstock, Virginia, checks into the game for Lucas Hernandez. Bowman, great cut, can't get the finish. Brown gets the rebound. McCurdy 
Bowman. Bozeman rather works on Anderson between the legs of Tubbs. Stickles, one more pass to Gertz. Koski will take a three. Good! Deep three there from Brantley. Koski, Koski pulled it with confidence. Don't see that very often from Brantley. Love to see him knock down those threes a little more consistently, make him even more of a threat as a point guard. Bozeman guarded by Anderson, finishes over two defenders. Jalen Bozeman. Koski goes to Wagner. Wagner in and out dribble, nearly loses it. Gertz with the three, good! Liam Gertz finds the energy somehow for his second triple of this half. Eagles who were down 15 just a moment ago find themselves within 11. Almost get the turnover there, Pioneers keep possession. Herbster will come in for Gertz and back into the game for the Pioneers. Number two, Braxton Cousins. A great defensive effort there by Brantley Koski, but a kickball violation rewarded to the Pioneers. Yeah, denying the inbounder is a severely underrated aspect of, def of defending. If you make that in inbound pass very difficult, even if the play is run very well, pass is very difficult can't get the easy finish, usually baseline out of a bounds, plays are meant for. Four on the shot clock, Wilkerson the fading jumper, no good. Here is Brantley Koski in transition. Finds Paul Stickles for his first collegiate points. What a pass there by Koski. Yeah, something I've been talking about all night, good patience from Brantley. Initially was looking for an outlet pass in transition, decided to just walk it up the floor, made a play call, but then saw Stickles back cut, found him for the easy two. Here is Cousins. Works on Herbster. Fading jumper. What a shot there by Braxton Cousins. They have him 14. Backdoor pass, good finish here. Opportunity, but the finish is well. By number five, Malachi Herbster. Great pass there from Aaron Wagner. Another back cut for the Eagles. But Brantley even better follow, honestly. Yeah, Brantley unable to finish it. But Malachi Herbster came with a quick tip, got the, got the easy two. Brown works on Stickles. Up and under, no good. Cousins rejected by Herbster. McCurdy now with the inbound. Curdy goes corner. Cousins. Goes out of bounds. Believe there was a little bit of contact, but no call by the official. The foul is what made the wall. The foul is what made the wall. Come on, The foul is what made the wall. Coach Perkins unhappy with that call. And honestly, in a little bit of an agreement with him as well. Nonetheless, heading southbound with Pensacola. Herbster goes to Paul Stickles for a corner three! Paul Stickles, the freshman from Woodstock, Virginia, knocks it down from long range. And just like that, Braden, a six-point game. Titus Anderson playing the passing lanes. Yeah, the Eagles were down 15 just about four minutes ago. Gone on a little bit of a run here, got themselves within six. Defensively is where they have put this run together, though. They've got multiple stops in a row here. Eagles need to find a way to hold the half-court defense once again as Cousins makes a fantastic drive down the lane, finishes through contact. When the Pioneers need a bucket the most, they go to the most reliable player on that team, Braxton Cousins. Gives him 16 points on the night, puts him at the free throw line for the opportunity for 17. Honestly, that was a great opportunity for him to start from the perimeter and work his way into the low post. 
Jake Longo will come in now for Brantley Koski. Koski now with four fouls with eight minutes remaining in regulation. That's gonna be costly for Koski. Free throw good for Cousins. Anderson goes inside to Herbster. Great rim awareness there by Malachi Herbster and a quick timeout called. Full timeout by Jason Bell, the head coach for the Eagles. Yeah, the Eagles once again put a little run there, gave up an and one, but quickly got a bucket, find themselves down seven. Coach Bell with a new lineup in, Brantley having to be on the bench, wants to talk about it with his team, see what they can draw up here for the last eight and a half minutes. Malachi Herbster now with 10 points. Eagles trail by seven when we come back. now trailing by seven against the Pioneers. Jacob Longo now recently checked into the contest for the Eagles. Gavin Hold, the freshman, being guarded by Paul Stick, who's the freshman as well. Eagles, a little bit of a zone here for the first time in the game, right out of a timeout. A little bit of an undersized team, so instead of trying to man up and hope they can stop Braxton Cousins, put together a 2-3 zone, make the Pioneers move the ball, try and keep it out of the paint. Late reaction there by Wagner, trying to come and deflect the shot of Hunter. Now McCowan will come into the game as well as Lazar Reno. But now, Wilkerson will come to the line for the free throw, knocks down the first one and his second trip tonight. Wilkerson again knocks down the second. Paul Stickles will control the ball here in the temple here for the Eagles, met by McCowan. Stickles will go inside to Herbster. Wagner with the three, no good. Longo with the foul. Great job there by Jacob Longo by grabbing the rebound, keeping the ball high, and immediately placing it back on the glass. Yeah, coaches always teach that. You get the rebound, keep it high, finish high. Jake tried there, got his arms knocked out from him. Puts him at the free throw line for two free throws. Arrera missed there for Jacob Longo. 12. Longo, a freshman 12. here for Pensacola Christian. From Fredericksburg, Virginia. Played his high school ball for his senior year at Faith Academy, and he misses both free throws. Secondary! They switch fields here. Now here's Hall. McCowan guarded by Longo. Loose ball. The fight for it. The Wilkerson touches the out of bound marker. Making it now. Pensacola possession. Yeah, great hustle there from Aaron Wagner. Almost lost the ball out of bounds. Wilkerson came diving in for it. Wagner made the smart play of letting him take it and roll out of bounds with it. Eagles take possession, down nine with seven to go. Long go. Wagner, he'll drive. 
And he is foul on his trip to the basket. Hey, make it go out. Let's go. Right now will be available Talk. for the inbound. Watch a cutter. Staggers. Watch the stagger. Oh. They get the ball into Malachi Herbster before the violation gets called. Wagner drives baseline, takes it to Anderson. Herbster, he'll take a three. Way Make off. Sure. Hey. Make sure. Hey. Had an open stipples to the left of him, but decided to take the triple despite having 10 points so far in this matchup. Back on the defensive side, here's Hunter Wilkerson. McCowan thought about a shot. Instead, Herbster will guard Braxton Cousins. And in this second half, he's been doing a phenomenal job forcing him to turn the ball over profusely. Yeah, Herbster's obviously been working hard there down in the bottom of that zone, fighting Cousins in and out of every possession. Hey, let's go. Cousins dribbles the ball out of bounds off his own foot. Eagles take possession. Still 71-62 our score. Eagles still down nine. Just under six and a half left in this game. Paul Stickles takes the screen. Goes up strong, a lot of contact, no call. But great defense there by Wagner. He goes up strong, misses. Wagner wanted the foul. I wanted the shot. Herbster in transition. Conlin, Herbster works on the smaller defender. A lot of contact. Honestly, bringing a lot of sloppy basketball playing in these past two possessions. Yeah. A little, little bit of slappiness here from both teams. Stickles kind of having to grab his elbow there. I know he came down hard on the floor on his finish. Refs didn't see anything play on. Hunter Wilkerson will swing it to Gavin Hall. Lazaro Nino knocks down the triple in the corner. Closes the lead to 12. And a foul called, Bozeman, McCurdy, as well as Zach Brown will come to the table for the Pioneers. As well as Hayden Robinson. Everybody out of the game except for, yes, you heard it, Braxton Cousins. That second unit for the Pioneers doing a great job sustaining a 12 point lead. Herbster will get it to Conlin. He'll take a triple. Good. Blaze yes. Conlin from downtown knocks down a three. His second three of the game, six points turtle. Great confident pull there from Blaze, top of the key, knocked down the open three, keeping the defense honest. Bozeman finds McCurdy. Zach Brown. Cousins goes inside quickly to Hayden. Possession will stay here. And here is Koski who will come in for Aaron Wagner. Koski going to have to play on eggshells here with four fouls. Yeah, definitely, especially right here with only two seconds left on the shot clock. Brantley in, can't get a dumb foul here under the basket. Give an easy two. Brown got a strong, strong take there off the inbounds. Pioneers extend their lead back to nine. Incredible that he got that off before the shot clock expired. Conlin another triple. No good. Bozeman, Robinson. McCurdy goes to Robinson. Great cutting here by the Pioneers. They go inside to Braxton Cousins. Spin move all the way to the basket. No good, but a foul. Yeah, once again, good footwork from Braxton Cousins. Smart play there. Gets the entry pass, takes a second to look around, realizes he's one-on-one -on -one in the high post. Tries a spin move, fadeaway finish. Can't get it to fall. Finds himself at the free throw line. Braxton Cousins so far with 17 points in this contest. Make that 18. A very patient player with phenomenal footwork. Herbster will also come out of the contest for Derek Woods. 
Woods will probably be tacked on with the responsibility of guarding Braxton Cousins for the duration of the game. And a full timeout called by Coach Perkins. Alvin Chapman and Braden Marder will step aside. Gertz back for the inbound to Brantley Koski, which has under four minutes remaining in regulation. Eagles trailing now by 13. Conlon works inside. Shot at the rim and good. Plays Conlon. He now has eight points. Yeah, those are eight big points for Blaze coming off the bench for the Eagles, putting in a lot of minutes, making good plays on the defensive side of the ball, finding two threes, and now that little turnaround jumper in the paint. Good production out of Blaze off the bench tonight. Great on-ball defense there by Liam Gertz, and also Blaze Conlon who forces the turnover. Didn't have to do much there except for slide his feet and get to the right spot. Lucas Hernandez also comes into the game for Paul Stickles. Eagles trailing by 11 now. Woods goes inside to Conlon. Conlon gets fouled on the low block. Hey, good foul. Good foul. set up a baseline out of bounds play distributed by Lucas Hernandez. One more pass to an open Koski. He'll take a short jumper, no good. And that is the fifth foul there for Brantley Koski. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not in Brantley's nature to not go after an offensive rebound. Shot goes up, he naturally just goes after the ball, runs into the defender who came down with the rebound, gets an unfortunate fifth foul. He leaves just under three minutes left. Eagles down 11. Paul Stickles back into the lineup here for Pensacola. Go, Zach Brown. They go inside to Bozeman. Now 10 on the shot clock. McCurdy. Shots on the way. No good front of the iron. Collected by Gertz. Now two minutes remaining. A shot will be pivotal here for Pensacola. Yeah, the Eagles need a bucket here. Get it back to single digits if they can. And a turnover by Luke Stickles. Rather, Paul Stickles. Looks like the Pioneer defender just intercepted that pass. Saw it the whole way through. And if it wasn't for the foul placed by Conlon, it would have been an easy bucket on the other side. First basket is up and good. A one one free throws. Homer Curdy. This basket can push the lead to 13. 
and it does. Now breaching the two minute mark to the end of regulation. Solid. Tomlin. Solid. Woods kicks it to Stickles. Stickles will drive. Stickles, a lot of contact, can't get the finish. Yeah, it's a good take from Stickles. Unfortunately, when he got down in there, he was trying to finish through a triple team. As you get downhill and you notice three guys waiting for you, you gotta find a quick kick. It means one of your guys is open. Eagles still down 13, minute and a half left in this game. The Pioneers looking to drain out a lot of clock here, but six remaining on the shot clock. And an offensive foul once again by McCurdy. That's its second offensive foul tacked to his name today. Yeah, he gets real aggressive going downhill. You love that as a coach offensively to have a guy who wants to get downhill that hard. Got to be smart, though, driving through somebody's chest and pushing off with the arm. Easy offensive foul call there for the official. The Eagles need a quick bucket here. Haven't been able to find one in the past two minutes. Gertz with the attempt to go behind his back to Paul Stickles. Paul gets stuck between a defender and to no avail. Lazaro Rino, as well as Paul and Cousins check into the game for the Pioneers. Now 79 seconds left in regulation. And the Pioneers looking to work the clock as much as they can. Cousins finds a wide open man. And the way the Pioneers are looking to take advantage of the clock. Brown, shot, no good. Conlon the rebound. Brady, we've been saying the same thing. The Eagles need a bucket, but they just can't find one or a person they can go to. Yeah, once again, having Brantley Kos Koski on the bench here at the end is a big hurt for the Eagles. Liam Gertz knocks down the open three. Having Koski on the bench right now is really unfortunate for the Eagles, obviously being the point guard. He initiates the offense for the Eagles, gets him downhill, finds the kickouts. Not having him in these last three and a half, four minutes has been really tough. Eagles looking to waste a lot of time, rather the Pioneers. And a turnover. Paul Stickles with the ball here. Stickles. Swings the ball across to Hernandez. Very risky pass that ends up into a turnover. Yeah, I think hey. skip pass was the right idea there. Looked like Derek Woods was setting a pin screen on the backside. Get Lucas Hernandez open for a three. Stickles just threw it a little too far, threw it out of play. And just like that, the game comes to its conclusion. That shot no good. The Eagles fall to the Pioneers 70 to 80. Pioneers pick, picks up their first win of the year as the Eagles fall now, Braden, to 0 and 2. Yeah, tough night in the nest. Unfortunately, offense couldn't really get flowing, put up 70 points, which is a good number. Defensively, obviously, is where the Eagles struggled. Giving up 80 points a game is going to be a tough spot anytime to try and find yourself winning a college basketball game. Eagles got to get back to the drawing board a little bit after this opening weekend, but definitely some good to take from these first two games of the year. Excited to see what the 2023-24 season holds. Thank you so much for the viewers at home for joining us here tonight. And then that's the home of the Pensacola Christian College Eagles and the conclusion of the Pensacola Invitational. Please continue to follow us on our social media platforms, Eagles PCC for all handlings. But until then, this is Alvin Chapman alongside with Braden Motter. Braden, once again, thank you so much for joining me here tonight. And fans at home, thank you so much for joining us as well. We will see you soon.